Council, I want to take you back to our main story, which is the uh, confrontation taking place in East Jerusalem. The uh, skirmishes, if I can call them that, have gone on for a third night now. And joining me is the human rights attorney and author of Justice for Some, Nora Erekat. Nora Erekat, thanks very much for joining us. Um, given that reference to justice for some, uh, I wonder what you think about the decision of the Supreme Court at least to postpone a uh, decision, a ruling uh, on the uh, Israeli settlers, given the tensions in the air at the moment. Uh, thank you for having me. I want to start off by emphasizing to the audience that these are not skirmishes. These are armed Israeli settlers who are terrorizing Palestinian neighborhoods, who are protected by the police as they do so. They are removing them from their homes, ironically, under an Israeli judicial decision that has authorized this removal because it found in 1982 uh, for a, the, a challenge of two Jewish groups who contested that this land belonged to them which placed the, the residents of Sheikh Jarrah in this awful position in the first place. So now that the Israeli court has decided you know, to pivot, to give this to the attorney general, to consider for the next 30 days, is frankly buying time because of the protest of, uh, of what is explicit, unbridled violence before our very eyes that makes clear for us this is not a conflict between two peoples fighting over one land. Right. This is an oppressive situation by the only nuclear power in the Middle East, the 11th most powerful military in the world, well, let me against ask the you, stateless people that it is removing from their homes yeah. in an ongoing neck. Let, let me ask you this then, Nora. What, what can you, do you think, do about it? And what sort of support do you think might yet come your way from the likes of a new administration in Washington? This administration has made clear that, it, that it's more of the same. The Democratic National Committee had already made clear before the Biden administration came into office that it did not plan on moving the U.S. Embassy from Jerusalem back to Tel Aviv in contraventions of international law. So what was hailed as awful by the Trump administration has actually been normalized by this Democratic administration. So And, and it's been very quiet. There has been nothing from uh, the State Department that has unequivocally condemned that even on their own terms, that this is counterproductive to the peace process, this is a contravention of international law, even under occupation law, this is the acquisition of territory by force, this is tantamount to right. a war crime, and yet we have heard nothing, which is to say, and, and really what the situation is, is an apartheid situation before our very eyes that we are trying to package lightly and sell um, to the world. What can we do? We're doing it. We are trying to protest. Palestinians have been arrested in mass. They have been standing by the, the, the community in Sheikh Jarrah. They have taken to social media and even the social media platforms where they have been trying to raise their voices because of borders yeah. that prevent them from being one another. Those social media posts have also been taken down uh, by Facebook, by Instagram, right. by Twitter, further si silencing Palestinians. But yeah. I think it's going to take nothing less than um, nonstop protest against the policy of okay. ongoing ethnic cleansing. We'll expect to see more then. Uh, Nora Erekat, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.